This is Rennie Knopf with ChampionshipBBQ.tv, and you're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Yay! Let's go! We'll do it live. Okay. Well, do it live! I can, I'll write it, and we'll do it live! So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Oh. Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Welcome to the Really Big Barbecue Central Show, a show that talks about all things important in the world of barbecue and grilling, originating from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio, the barbecue capital of the North Coast. I am your program host, Greg Rempe. Happy to have you aboard here for your live fire fun and frivolity show. If you want to jump in on the show tonight, we have Meathead coming up. I'll get to that in uh, in a few minutes for the duration of the first hour. We'll be talking about a number of things. I encourage you, I have often encouraged you to call in. And if you want to jump in through the phone or the email, here's how you do that. You can get in touch with the show by calling 216-220-0966. Email Greg at the BBQCentralShow.com. On the Twitter and Instagram, at BBQ Central Show. Anything else you want to find out about the show can be found at the main website, thebbqcentralshow.com. And here's what's happening, as I had mentioned just a few seconds ago. In the first hour, because it is the second Tuesday of the month, you know what that means. We're going to be having ourselves a visit from the creator of the most heavily trafficked barbecue and grilling website on the Earth, Meathead. From AmazingRibs.com, actually in the green room, taking in the open, as he usually does. And tonight, we have on the agenda, whatever that means to you, some gifts for the 2020 Live Fire Cooker in your life. We also will be talking about beef roasts. I'm getting away from just using the term prime rib, because it can mean bunch of different things to a bunch of different people so we will say rib roast in general and we can dive into the minutia from there with meathead uh, of course hand in hand with talking beef roast thicknesses cooking times what you want to do to it what you don't want to do to it what you might want to do to it if you're cooking it and reserving some of the best parts for you since you're potentially putting out both for the money and the labor involved to get it where it needs to be so everybody can think that you are indeed the live fire cook of the neighborhood and many other things that will come up in conversation as well. So that's Meathead in your first hour, and then we'll move to the second hour. Joining me, 14 past, first timer to the show, the director of sales and marketing for B&B Charcoal, one of the newest sponsors here to this show and rolling into 2020. Ed Riley will be joining us. And we'll talk to Ed a little bit about his background, if he's always been in the live fire industry, when he got on with B&B. And then we'll learn about B&B. Uh, for as long as I have known about the product itself, I don't necessarily have a huge working knowledge of where B&B came from and how they've grown into what they are today. And then, of course, we'll talk about two of the most popular fuels in the charcoal market, that being lump charcoal and briquette charcoal, Ed will talk about both specifically, and especially when it comes to the briquette side, talk about how theirs are made over at B&B. I don't know if we'll get into the whole other products portfolio that they're offering, but as you go to bbcharcoal.com, you can quickly find out that they have a number of products that are widely available. They don't sell through online. I'll confirm that next hour, but I believe they are not selling online. It is all through uh, distributors and dealers, things of this nature. So you're going to have to go to a store in order to get it. You can't go to the website and order and then have it sent to your house like you can with some other folks. So uh, that'll be a chat with Ed Riley, first timer to the show. And then we'll close it out tonight with the 35 past the hour, ever popular open segment. 
Every once in a while, I like to squeeze in an open segment where there's, you know, not a specific agenda per se, because there's not a guest per se. Now, somebody might randomly call in. I doubt it. But somebody might randomly call in and away we go. We're off and running on something completely unscripted, unthought of, unscheduled. I have a number of things that I have been trying to get to at the top of the second hour that have made its way back into the bullpen and back into the bull. We've had it warming up a number of times. It's never been the right time to mix in some of these. So tonight might be the 35 past the hour unveiling of such items as when would you be in a position where you would be most likely to eat undercooked foods? There was an article done on that all the way back in June, and it's just been sitting in the computer waiting for me to get to that. And we also might learn a little bit about the is it sturgeon caviar. Is that the high dollar stuff? I might get to my bottled water take, which has also been sitting out roughly before the beginning of summertime. That may or may not happen. That's the thing. I have so much great stuff that I think I'm going to get to during the show, and then time quickly evaporates. I talked to folks, for instance, Ed. I was talking to Ed on the phone, sound checking him yesterday, or that was earlier this morning. And he's like, oh, only 18 minutes. I'm like, you'll be surprised how quickly time will go once we actually start talking. And sometimes I fall into that myself. I think I have all this time, and all of a sudden I'm through the top of the hour when the typical rants start and I haven't left an open segment which is why we're mixing one in this evening so that's how the show lays out for you this evening meathead coming up shortly at Riley at 14 past the second hour open segment 35 past the second hour we'll see how it goes from there 216-220-0966 Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. don't forget you can follow me socially Insta, Twitter, TikTok and Snappy Snap at BBQ Central Show, Facebook and Twitch, slash BBQ Central Show, and live on YouTube, slash RD Rempe. So a number of ways you can get at me during the show and off hours. I want to say thank you very much to all the folks that are continuing to follow up with me as it relates to my surgical procedure with my ear. We're almost at week two. It will be Two weeks on Friday. Thursday, I go to the ear doctor for my 10-day post-op visit. Actually, be longer than 10 days at that point. But We had like one that was scheduled for three days outside of the original procedure date, and then that was canceled because the doctor wanted to see me specifically. He didn't want to cart me off to his assistant or whatever the medical proper medical term is. Physician's assistant, doctor's assistant. Nurse practitioner, I don't know. He said, no, no, we're going to cancel. I want you to come back in and see. I got a number of emails also saying, Greg, last week you mentioned that they cut your ear off and did whatever they did and then sewed it back on. Were you just elaborating on what they actually did? Uh, I'm not elaborating on what they actually did. They uh, basically, I wonder... Now that I'm thinking about it, if I might just have a picture of what it looked like uh, post surge, here we go. I do. As luck would have it. Let me pull that up. Blow it up. Hmm. That's not like the best picture I've ever seen from a grain quality. If you're squeamish, I mean, it's not that bad, but, you know, uh, I'm putting it up in three, two, one. So there you go. You can see that the incision line runs all the way from the top of my ear and then all the way back down to, you know, where my lobe is uh, right here. And it runs all the way there. So I believe they uh, slit all the way down and then pulled my ear off in order to get at the ear hole, which is, again, where they were doing the procedure, tearing down the eardrum, giving me. Not one, but two new hearing bone prosthetics. The little itty bitty. You should see these things. Can't even believe that they can wear out. But evidently, the tumor that I had in my ear was causing all sorts of havoc on the hearing bones and in the uh, the brain wall that was just above it that was starting to erode. So now that's all worked out, and 
I have a much bigger ear hole. I'm still uh, wearing the very trendy cotton ball in the ear for protection and for drainage soak. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, Thursday is the 10th, and that is when I will be in the doctor's office. And we'll see what he says. Uh, Lord knows. I couldn't possibly. Exaggerating, not elaborating. Didn't I say exaggerating, Doug? Did I not say exaggerate? I meant, oh, jeez. Look, I was not exaggerating or embellishing, Doug. I think that was the word, embellishing. I was looking for embellishing. Shame on me. My wordsmithness is not sharp this evening, but I will step the game up when I get to Meathead here shortly. I'll talk to you quickly about Barbecue Guru, longest running sponsor of the show. And they, of course, have everything you need to be a better barbecue and griller, especially with the automatic pit temperature control devices that they're offering. And they're also offering cookers, really cool accessories. Remember, we got a couple weeks left until the holidays are here. So if you're looking for great gift ideas for your live fire loved one, head on over to bbqguru.com and see what the deal is over there. Maybe you have a ceramic cooker or a kettle style cooker or a bullet style cooker. And your loved one is constantly bitching at, oh, I can't keep heat in this thing. How do you even keep the temperature stable? Well, easily go to the barbecue guru and then choose one of their brand new controllers. The DynaQ, the Ultra Q, depending on your level of tech. Ultra Q if you're a huge tech person. DynaQ if you want something that's more cruise controlly. That has replaced the Party Q, which was the easiest point of entry for years over at the Barbecue Guru. But choose between one of those. Two. They have some other options as well if that isn't going to fit your bill. You can ask all the questions you want when you call them at 800 288 G-U-R-U. That's 800-288-GURU. And they will make sure that they have all your questions answered. That way you know you are ready to rock and roll when that box of goodies show up. Or you put it under the tree. And when it's opened as the gift, that person will also be ready because you have all the knowledge as well. Don't forget, they have a built-in power draft fan cooker. It's ceramic. It's called the Monolith. We learned about that one a couple weeks ago. If you have a Guru controller, you don't need to buy a new one to make this work. Hook it to the fan. Away you go. You can easily choose cooking time and temperature. Let the monolith do the work of a sous chef or a barbecue pit master. Go to bbqguru.com or 800-288-GURU. Meathead from AmazingRibs.com is ready to go. Stick around. We'll be right back. You're listening to the number one most downloaded barbecue and grilling podcast anywhere. The Barbecue Central Show. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Show studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. Hey, this portion of the show being brought to you by Butcher Barbecue, makers of award-winning injections, marinades, rubs, seasonings, barbecue sauces, grilling oils. All the Butcher Barbecue products have been tested on the competition circuit, as well as backyards worldwide. Be the pitmaster of your neighborhood. And visit ButcherBBQ.com to stock up now. Always trust your butcher. All right, it is the fourth Tuesday of the month. I'm feverishly trying to get there. And you know what that means. Not only is it the visit from the most heavily trafficked barbecue and grilling website's creator, it means we get to listen to a few bars of You Can't Hurry Ribs. That is Meathead from AmazingRibs.com. Hey, Meathead. Hey, Greg. Hello, Centralite. And uh, this portion of the show is brought to you by yes. Ear Butchers. Yes, Always how about that? Ear Butcher. He did. Get that microphone oh close to you. What are you doing? Let's go. Get right oh up on that God. thing like a professional. There we go. 
Yep. Eat, eat the mic you once taught me. Yeah, so I saw you hiding your eyes in the green room when I was revealing. <laughs> Some people like to think that maybe I'm embellishing what was going on, but I mean... I wish I was, but when I when I got home, my wife looked at it and she's like, geez, you know what? I think they cut your whole ear off. And I said, you got to be kidding me. And she said, this incision is running right from the top all the way to the bottom. Like they didn't cut it off and, you know, discard it onto the, onto the table, but they cut enough of it off where they could kind of well, move it around as they see fit in order to get it to places they needed to get to. But in the end, you know. Hopefully, this is the more permanent and healthy ear. It's just another butchery. Uh, you know, what kind of knives are they using? Uh, Gunter Wilhelm or... Yes, uh, I, think they the were the, uh, I think they were the knockoff Henkels. The knockoff Henkels? <laughs> yes, of course. A German knife. Yes, a knockoff Henkel. <laughs> $10, I believe, on, uh, on, uh, at Costco if you go right now. Uh, that's where they at. All right, so we have some uh, items to get to here this evening over the course of the hour, Meathead. And uh, the holidays are quickly approaching, regardless of whatever you're celebrating. And perhaps you are in love with somebody that is a live fire enthusiast. And this has got to be one of the more recurring questions for you, whether it's a birthday or at some point this year is, what should I be getting my husband or wife or same-sex lover uh, they're really into live fire. What should I be getting them? Because inevitably, if you've been in it as long as we have, the old adage of, well, I think I got everything kind of comes into play. But you and I both know there is no limit to gadget and other accoutrement for live fire. Well, every year there's a whole new flock of them out there. Yeah. I mean, at the risk of being repetitive and your audience um, probably knows this, but you just can't go wrong buying somebody a good digital thermometer. Um, you know, um, aside from a great knife, it's probably the single most important tool a cook can have. Cook, and I say cook, not just barbecue cook, indoors, outdoors. Um, there's a whole variety of them out there. Um, they get better and better and more complex every year. Um, right now, the absolute top of the line uh, is the fireboard. Uh, I got one right here. Hold on. The meathead has taken off. Here. He's gone away. Yeah. There we go. Uh, hey, Meathead, I don't know if you heard my uh, interview with Ted Conrad a couple weeks ago, but he was yes. on, and he had yeah. mentioned that they were coming. Fireboard 2 was coming out as a thermocouple option as well. So they were going to have three thermocouple inputs, and then they were also going to be making some kind of a bridge or a connector where you could get, you know, maybe up to six or so thermocouples in there. They're great innovators. Yeah. I'm waiting for them to come out with a wireless probe, which is very tricky, but this is the, uh, the fireboard for yep. those who didn't hear the interview with Ted. Um, it's about the size of a pack of cigarettes and it can handle six probes uh, and the probes are pretty accurate. Um, and this thing's really cool because it talks to your computer um, and you can run it from your computer or your smartphone. Um, it runs, I think, somewhere around 200 bucks. That's the top of the line. But, I mean, you can get uh, instant read thermometers for under 30 bucks. Uh, um, uh, we, at the risk of being a little promotional here, um, we got a guy on our team, Bill McGrath, who's a... Uh, Electrical engineer retired from mobile, and uh, he tests thermometers for us. We got him special equipment that tests how accurate it is and how speedy it is, and he tests thermometers for us, and uh, we've got almost 200 thermometers tested, rated, reviewed on our website. So go over there, poke around, find one in your price range, pick one of the platinum or gold medal winners. Um, we don't sell any of them, but we've got links to where to buy them. And uh, get get on it now because, you know, the shipping system is going to be backlogged. Uh, and you just can't go wrong getting somebody a, a digital thermometer. I think one of our top rated uh, instant reads is only 16 bucks. So, you know, go, go check them out. Um, all kinds of other gadgets and gizmos out there. Um, can I interrupt hey, can just I for a second? Can I interrupt for just one second? 
on the yeah, th- on the yeah. thermometer side, you know, if this conversation we were having was ten years ago, we would probably be dumping on sixteen dollar thermometers. Fast forward here to yeah. twenty twenty. Why are we not as apprehensive on buying a twenty dollar thermometer when we have been regularly yeah. preaching the seventy to eighty dollar thermopen from Thermal? Yeah. Well, the technology is advanced. I mean, uh, everything is is um, is digital and uh, beautifully uh, designed, and uh, uh, the flaws have been uncovered and corrected. Uh, you can get good digital thermometers for under thirty bucks. Mm-hmm. Very good ones. All right. The Thermapen, which is everybody's favorite, still is hovering around a hundred bucks, but they've got good serious competitors down in the thirty dollar range. Um, so you don't have to spend a fortune on a good thermometer anymore. All right. You were going to be making another point uh, before I interrupted you, so go ahead. I was curious. I, I, you know, Is there a way to share screen here? Like uh, share your screen with me? Yeah. Like no. I, I, there's a – oh, okay. There's um, one of the things in, in our gift guide that I was uh, fond of that we uh, – that I, it's a, a, a burger flipper. It's basically two spatulas – hinged at the center um and and if you just go to our site and search on burger flipper but it's good enough to do fish um and you know turning fish is always hazardous um and so if you can imagine two oval shaped spatulas that are wider than they are long hinged um that's a really nice one and i think it's like 15 bucks or something a nice gift um what are some of the others you know um i I mentioned the gunter wilhelm knives i'm really fond of the gunter wilhelm knives and he's uh fond of barbecue people but thanksgiving i was reminded how useful a great um uh, kitchen shears is um his um kitchen shears are really sturdy, really comfortable, and they'll cut through the rib bones of a turkey if you're going to spatchcock your turkey. And the best part of a good kitchen shears is is they separate when you put them in the dishwasher. If you can't separate the scissors, then meat and other things can build up at the hinge area, and there's a sanitation issue. Um, so good, a, a good pair of... Um, uh, kitchen shears that break apart in the center. Gunter Wilhelm has a really nice set. There are others. Um, Oxo makes some. Um, that would be a good choice, I think. Oh, uh, what else? What do you think about um, uh, knife sharpeners? Uh, I get from time to uh, time. Look, here's yeah, the thing, right? right. You, you've gone and you've spent money on a really nice knife. Uh, I have a set of knives that I'm going to be showing at the top of the second hour that I got from Sam the Cooking Guy. Uh, they're not like break the bank nice. They were, I think, separately. They're all under a hundred bucks, but they're very nice, good weight. They seem to be of really good quality, sharp as hell, right out of the box, of course. But yeah, over you time, threatened everybody with one at the top of yes, the Yes, I did. That was the eight inch chef's knife. But I also have a nakiri and a bread knife and a paring knife that I'll be showing as well. So that seems to be a huge issue with folks. Is after so much use, or or maybe they're not a highest quality knife so they lose edge or you know whatever their hone or whatever the hell you call it and you get into a position where you as the consumer are now tasked to sharpen or do you search around google and find a knife sharpener around you or do you buy some type of machine or stone to do this yeah i i have a partial answer on that i probably have five hundred dollars worth of knife sharpening tools around here because I've played with them all. Wow. The, 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 t- the top of the, well, first of all, there's this old Italian guy who comes through my neighborhood every year with a cart and it's got wheels like the size of wagon wheels and a bell that rings like the ice cream man. And he rolls down the street and people come out with their knives. He sits down on a little stool there and it's a pedal-operated um, belt system, and he sharpens knives for two bucks a piece. Wow! Well, if you can get Antonio to come to your house, that's the best answer. Um, what restaurants do is there are professional knife sharpeners out there, 
and they'll swing by the restaurant once a week and pick up all their knives, drop off a batch. So a lot of restaurants essentially have two sets of knives. And while one is at the sharpener, the others are in use. And so the sharpener will pick up almost all their knives, take them back to the shop, sharpen them up, bring them back and drop them off, pick them up again. They're constantly rotating. And you can find these guys by Googling around or asking at a restaurant, where do they sharpen their knives? But if you want to do it yourself, I, I, I wish I had thought that we realized we we're going to do this because I could have brought all these gadgets out and shown them to you. Um, the best one I've worked on is the Ken Onion mm. knife and tool sharpener. And it's motorized. It's a blade. It, it's, it's got belts. Um, and the nice part of the belts is, is that they're somewhat flexible. Um, and uh, uh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't have to screen sharpen your screen share. You're right there. Um, it, it runs a couple hundred bucks, I think. Um, but it's got several belts. And you can do everything from scissors um, to knives, uh, kitchen knives. And uh, the, the risk of gouging is low. Um, there's, um, I'm playing with whetstones now. Whetstones, uh, I, I bought a set of whetstones years ago, and I bought another set. There's a couple of them that are that have locking mechanisms that hold the blade at the precisely correct angle. Um, they, they work okay. They're a bit fussy. Um, they're time-consuming. Um, you can get um, uh, a, a, a knife sharpener that sits on the table and has a wheel that spins, and uh, you slide the knife in. Those work pretty well. Um, the 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 um, the honers that you see on TV, those like sticks that the chefs go zip zop zip zop zip zop zip zop. Those are not sharpeners. Hmm. Those are just for honing. When you work with a knife, the blade can bend slightly and curve, and this helps take the curve out. But a sharpener actually cuts away some of the metal off the blade and returns that v-shaped edge to perfection there's a we've got a we've got a review of a bunch of knife sharpeners on our website so you might go look over there and they really range in prices um whetstones are not terribly expensive um and they give you this feeling that you're a you're you're, you're davy crockett i've heard those are very difficult to get used to though like i heard they provide great uh results if you can do it right but it's not something that you can just you know quickly slap some grease on the stone pull the knife over a couple times and away you go they they're, they're a little fussy there's they usually come in three different grit levels and you either wet them or oil them and you don't do both you decide when you get it if you're going to oil it or you're going to wet it and um uh, they you know because you have to have the blade at the proper angle and you got to hold it at the angle. Now, there, some of them have like little um, starter blocks that help you get the right angle and then you got to pull it across. Well, they're crap. They require some craftsmanship. Hmm. There are a few of them out there now, and, and I don't have pictures of them on the web, web, website, but there's a few of them out there now that have, um, um, have guides. And I've, I've got a set, but it's down in the basement. I'm not going to take the time to run down and pick it up now. Is it uh, something that would look like this, or is this something completely different? Uh, completely different. Oh. I can find pictures of it. I don't have it up eh. on the website. Yeah, no worries. I, I've been pl still pl pl testing it. All right. Uh, so we got some knife sharpeners. We got the uh, thermometers, of course. What about, uh, I hate to use the word gimmick, but sometimes there is something that has captured the fancy of a market. It might ride the gimmick line a little bit. Like the, the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of gimmick gift for this time of year was the year they brought out the grill bot, which was the grill cleaning oh, robot God. that you turned it on. Oh, and, you sucked the, and it was like a, oh, a, a horrific. It still shows up in the sharper image catalog and all the gadget freak catalogs. <laughs> Don't buy that thing. Um, it, it, it doesn't really do a great job. It, it only gets some of the grease off the top. It doesn't get the sides and the bottoms, which you need to get clean and, uh, it, it, not, not effective. Uh, you know, it's, it, don't do it. Um, there are some good gadgets out there. I mean, um, uh, if, if you like pizza and you've got a gas grill, 
Um, there's something called the Bakerstone Pizza Oven Box. Um, and this is a, uh, uh, a box that you put on top of your gas grill that does a pretty darn nice job of cooking pizza. Um, so you now have a, uh, um, an outdoor pizza oven. That's a, that's a hot trend now. There's a whole bunch of these. Oh, you found it already. Sure. Man, you're, you are on the case. Oh, um, there's a whole bunch of um, um, these new small portable pizza ovens that are really hot. Um, the Uni and the Rockbox. Uh, we have a review of the Uni. Um, there, uh, we've tested three of them, and the new, the new Uni. It looks like a tortoise. Um, is pretty good. It's it, it very much replicates the performance of a real pizza oven, and the rock box. With there it is, Greg. You are just a, a, amazing. <laughs> um, the Uni Coda, um, and uh, I think it's under three hundred bucks, and it really. It does a pizza in under two minutes. Hmm. I mean, it it is blazing hot, 900 degrees. In fact, it's too hot. I find I have to dial it down to 600 or so to get my, the, you know, the whole problem of cooking pizza is getting the top and the bottom done at the same time. And uh, if you're running too hot, you can either overcook one and undercook the other. It's getting the balancing point right that's tricky. Uh, there's a, a new one called the Rock Box, which I just got. I haven't had a chance to work with it yet. I haven't assembled it. But it looks really cool, really well designed. Um, so if you're a pizza fanatic, the, Breville has one that is indoors. Now that's nice. It's electric. It's indoors. And David Joachim, our editor, God, there it is. You are amazing, Greg. Um, this is really cool. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, David Joachim, David's written books on pizzas. Um, mm. He tested this and raved about it uh 700 degrees indoors you don't have to worry about uh, smoke ventilation or anything um it's electric uh so that's a, that's a good option if you're a pizza lover and he he thinks it works really well yeah he raved about it right. it's not cheap it's around seven or eight hundred bucks though. Oh, all right well i mean my biggest uh recommendation Unfortunately, you have to have a Green Mountain Grill. Is if you have one of those, the Jim Bowie or the Daniel Boone, yes. is to immediately get the pizza of an insert. Much like I tell people, Actually, if you're getting in the barbecue, you get a vacuum sealer of some sort. Uh, if you get a Green Mountain Grill, you have yeah, to get the pizza yeah. of an insert. It's just a hand in hand compliment. Actually, Greg, we've been testing that Green Mountain Grill pizza of an insert on other um, pellet smokers. And it fits a number of them. And we have a review of it. And I think we've listed several that it does work on. Wow. Um, and uh, and uh, there it is. Um, it, it sits on top of the Green Mountain. But it works on other, you know, you, 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 you might want to get some measurements or contact the manufacturer. But you've got one, haven't you, Greg? And you like oh, it. Oh, yes. Yeah, I have two, actually. So it's, it's one of my favorite items. Um, I've actually relegated one of my Green Mountain Grills to be only a pizza cooker, and then the other one, uh, if we have a lot of people coming over for pizza, I'll rip the guts out of that one and run two at a time, uh, or I'll keep it as a traditional cooker, and I'll just use the, the pizza oven, insert one for the pizza oven. And we have lost Meathead. Did I lose the internet? I think I lost the internet. Hello? Hello? I've lost the internet. Oh, dear. All right, well, let's play some music here real quick so we can figure it out. Meathead. <laughs> Jeez Louise. All of a sudden you what went happened? frozen and uh, I don't my my internet went out. Jesus. Yeah. Green Mountain Grills are, from a dollar aspect and a performance aspect, some of the best pellet cookers out there on the market today. They are sold through dealers, so you can't go online to GreenMountainGrills.com and buy them. Now, you can go to GreenMountainGrills.com and find out all you want about the different models, the Choice line, the Prime line, the Prime Plus line. Depending on how much money you want to spend and what level of tech you want on your cooker, that will obviously decide 
what level of cooker that you want. Now, if you can save some money and you don't need internal meat probes and the Wi-Fi technology, Choice Line is really all that you need. If you want to add a little bit, go Prime. You get a little bit more of a robust build on the chassis, two internal meat probes, peek-in windows on the main cooking chamber, and then the pellet hopper. You also have Wi-Fi connectivity at this point, so you can download the app and use it that way. And then the Prime Plus kicks it up just another notch. Fold-down shelf on the front instead of the fixed one that you get on the Prime. And you have lights inside the cooking chamber. A couple extra more dollars from the Prime to the Prime Plus. So you figure out what your budget is, which what you really need. I've never heard anybody complain about buying too big of a pellet cooker or a cooker in general. Don't buy small for the budget. Buy big because nobody complains about having one that's big enough. But they always complain about having one that isn't big enough. Go to GreenMountainGrills.com. Search out all the accessories. They have rubs and sauces. They also have pellets there. And the pizza oven insert that I've talked about. So hey now. GreenMountainGrills.com. That's GreenMountainGrills.com. Longtime sponsor of this show. Be looking forward to catching up with Jason Baker as the year turns to see what's going on with Green Mountain Grills in 2021. And we'll be back with Meathead and Beef Roast Talk. Stick around. We'll be right back. Stern, Jim Rome, Dan Patrick, and Greg Rampey. The Mountain Rushmore of talk show entertainment. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show. And this portion brought to you by CookinPellets.com, your number one source for quality wood pellets for all your pellet-driven cookers, Traeger, Green Mountain Grills, so on. Your number one source for quality wood pellets. Go to cookandpellets.com for more information or purchase. You can also visit amazon.com as well and see all the flavors and other things that they offer over there on the website. And we're talking with Meathead from amazingribs.com. Meathead, let me ask you one quick question. No, I got to interrupt you. Go ahead. Um, you lost your Facebook link. What does Facebook that mean? Is from- I've lost my Facebook link? Well, you were broadcasting live on Facebook, and you're no yes. longer broadcasting live on Facebook. Oh, let's see. The, your feed to Facebook is busted. Stream one. How do I fix that? I don't know. I'm going to just tell you. He is working on it. All right, let's see. Stop streaming there. I'm going to start streaming there. See if that works. Facebook is reading the live video is ended. Hold on. Getting an orange. Now we should be back on Facebook. Uh, I'm going to refresh the browser. Refresh that browser. You're back. All right. Let me we tell people we're back. The browser. All right. Thank God. Okay. Man, the internet screws everything up when it doesn't work. It's the worst part of the internet. It's a good thing I'm watching Facebook for you. I know. I'm really mostly yeah. concerned with just the audio. I mean, if the video makes it okay, but you know, I don't go out of my way to. No, but you got an audience the out there. You yeah, got to respect yeah, yeah. your audience. Whatever. Uh, we're talking with Meathead from AmazingRibs.com. That's most important. So, Meathead, let me ask you this question: On uh, you had mentioned that the uni is uh, something that you've had some success with. Yeah. Um, I was just talking with Christian who is the owner over at uh, Uni a couple weeks ago for a bonus content. And I brought up to him, I said, hey, I think that because they talk all the time about 900 degrees and 1,000 degrees. I said, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you what you should be saying or not or what temperatures you should be running at or not. My Green Mountain Grill can get up to somewhere in the 900 plus degrees if I have the cooker set all the way to 500 degrees. But I have found that when the pizza stone is at 650 or 700 tops is where my best pizzas come. And I've run at 800 and 900 degrees every single time. The bottom is toast. Yep. And I said, hey, and I've talked to 
the foremost pizziola of America, whose, by the way, his name is Matt Frampton from Urban Slicer Pizza. I don't know if you're aware of him, Meathead, but he is no. uh, he's a real-life pizziola, if you can believe it. You got to go to school for that. He did that. Yeah. And he said, Actually, there is, there is a school, the school. Yes, it's in California. The Neapolitan Pizzolas are here in the Chicago area. I've been oh, there. it is? All right. Yeah. Well, he went to one out in, uh, I think, Chicago, L.A. area and uh, become a pizziola. And he said, I told him where I was running. He, whoa, 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 like way too hot. You want that pizza stone to be at, you know, X. And as soon as I made that adjustment, no problem. So when, is it um, dangerous for companies to just toss around such high numbers in order to attract a consumer that could then lead to disappointment and heartache right off the bat? Yeah, might be. I think, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, these can get up to 900. Um pizza cooking is tricky. Pizza making is tricky. If you're doing just a margarita, which is dough, some tomato sauce, a little bit of fresh mozzarella and some basil, there's not a lot on top. Right. So you're basically doing a piece of bread um, and you can get away with a higher temperature than if you've got meats and vegetables and a thick layer of cheese and all that other stuff piled on, you now have an insulation layer that's thick and is preventing heat from getting down to the top of the bread. So you've, you've got to struggle for what I call simultaneous pizza gasm, getting the top and the bottom done at the same time. And there's nothing wrong with the little black spots, we call them leopard spotting, yep. on the bottoms, but you don't want to burn the bottom. And it's very easy to burn the bottom if you're running too hot. And for me, I think around 600 is 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 the right number. The the way I dress my pies, um, and uh, and and the way I make my dough. I mean, if there's a lot of oil in your dough, it's going to perform differently than if there's not. So it it, you, it takes a little practice. Um, but that raises an interesting question. And let, let, let's. Uh, let, I, I haven't really ever stressed this enough on your show, but I've talked a lot about it in print. All right. This question of temperature versus energy is really important that people who cook understand, whether you cook indoors or outdoors. It's the energy that matters, not the temperature. Um, and the example I often give is um, turn on your stove, set it for, say, 225. When it gets to 225, open the door and stick your arm in. You can actually hold your arm in there at 225 air temp. Now, put your hand on the side of that stove. <laughs> when you get back from the hospital, you'll understand that everything that's 225 is not the same. That 225 degree metal transferred a lot more energy to your hand than that 225 degree air. And if you had a pot of water in there or a pot of oil in there, it would be hotter than the air. Yep. Air is not a good energy source or a transfer of, air, an, an, of energy. And we're always talking about, well, my pellet grill gets up to 700 degrees. It doesn't matter. If you want to sear a steak, you need infrared radiation, not air temperature. Air temp a, a, a 700 degree air is not going to give you a great sear on a steak. If you want to sear a steak, it needs to be over glowing coals, or flame, that's infrared radiation. Infrared radiation packs a lot of energy. Now, alternatively, you can sear a steak by laying it in a hot metal pan. Conduction is a great source of energy, like touching your hand to the side of that oven. So it's really important when we start talking about what temperature our grill gets up to, um, that we talk about the energy and how are we getting that energy. And for if you're a steak lover or if you love pork chops or burgers and you want that good dark crust, you need infrared. And if we're going to get into talking about um, beef roasts, the whole concept of reverse sear is that you start with convection airflow. So you're gently warming the meat with warm air but then you're finishing it over the direct infrared radiation to get the crust, to get the sear, and that's powerful juju. That's lots of energy. That's how you get a good sear. So air temperature is not a, something to brag about. 
It's not something to obsess about. It, it, air temperature is fine for low and slow and indirect and roasting. But if you want to get a crust, you want to get Maillard reaction, you want to get sear, it's infrared that you need. Hmm. All right. So let's go ahead and jump into the beef roast talk since that'll take yeah. us through to the end of the segment here. As we have talked about year after year at this stage, we've had the turkey. Some people will double up on Christmas, do a Christmas turkey as well as the Thanksgiving turkey. But a lot of people will change and go prime rib or, uh, sorry, rib roast, uh, whatever that looks like to you. So let's talk about uh, tips and practices and things you should and shouldn't do and all that stuff. And I have pictures, too, as you sent along that I can yeah. mix in. Well, I mean, uh, uh, beef re- roast can range from chuck roast to uh, rump roast um, to um, tenderloin. But, um, you know, the, the, the most extravagant and the, uh, I, I think the best all around, of course, is the rib roast or the prime rib. And uh, let's just get the term prime straightened out here. Um, USDA ranks the quality of beef. Um, uh, select is a, is a lower grade. Choice is a good grade. Um, there are two essentially layers of choice, regular choice and upper choice or top choice, and then prime. Um, and then beyond that, beyond the USDA rankings, then there's Wagyu and Kobe and so on. But um, if you're wanting a really good beef roast, you want to get a minimum of choice or top choice. Um, and uh, uh, you want to ask your butcher uh, to be specific about that because it's got a good level of marbling. Um, so that that's what you want to look for. A, a full prime rib roast is seven bones wide, and each bone is about the width of two ribeye steaks. The, the, this rib roast is, in fact, what they cut ribeye steaks from. Mm. And so you want, um, depending on how many people you have, um, you want to cook a, around a pound of meat per person because there's a, or you want to buy a, around a pound of meat per person, excuse me, because there's a lot of fat and the surface fat will not penetrate the meat. It's internal fat. Marbling is crucial. That's where tons of flavor and moisture come from. But um, the big thick fat cap cannot get into the meat. This is just a fact. Um, people are people want to leave that on there, but if you leave that on there, when you serve it, people are going to carve it off, and with that, they'll be carving off your rub. So trim off almost all the fat. Maybe leave a quarter inch, people, because that'll shrink during cooking down to an eighth inch. People will eat a thin layer of fat like that, and when it's got your seasoning on it, that's really tasty. But you want to get rid of a lot, and and uh, when you buy a a, a a a beef prime rib, almost a third of the weight, unfortunately, will be fat and trim. Wow. Now you can save that, and I'll freeze it, and I'll save it, and I'll use it in my hamburger grinds because usually hamburger grind needs a little extra fat. So you can and you can also melt it and use it to paint uh, a steak when you're when you're grilling it. And at the last stage, if you do a reverse sear and you move it over to infrared and paint it with a little of this beef fat, it really gives it a nice flavor. So that's a trick that uh, you might want to do if you peel off. The other thing I recommend is you remove the bones. Now, I know everybody loves gnawing on the bone, but the bones cause all kinds of problems. First of all, they don't add flavor. Um, everybody says, oh, the bones have a lot of flavor. If you take beef rib bones and you put them in a crock pot or a stew pot, they will add flavor because water and wine that you cook with are solvents and they will get into the bone and remove the flavorful marrow. But the exterior of the bone is calcium and that doesn't have any flavor. And if you're dry cooking in the oven or the grill or the smoker, there's no way the marrow can get through that calcium to the meat. So the bones do not in any way, shape or form under any circumstances on this planet or any other planet contribute to the flavor. Now, what they can do is they can block heat. They become a heat shield. And if you've ever done 
bone-in ribeyes or bone-in rib roast, you know when you're up against that bone, the meat is almost raw, or if you're cooking a medium rare. It, it, the, 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 the doneness of the meat next to the bone is significantly less than the doneness of the meat on the other side of the steak. So you have uneven cooking. And I like to have even cooking. I want my meat cooked the same from edge to edge. And I don't, I don't like raw meat. Um, so I like to remove the, uh, the bones. And if you remove that plate of bones, now you've got another meal. That whole rib rack is a delicious meal. And a seven bone rib rack is enough for two people. There's a lot of meat in between the bones. And you just smoke those babies up. Um, four or five hours of smoking, tender, juicy, wonderful tasting. <laughs> and now you've got a big tube. That's the, um, um, uh, the um, longissimus dorsi muscle. Uh, and the spinalis dorsi, they're two muscles, and it's a big long tube, and you can now squeeze it together until it's round, tie it up, cinch it up with rope, and, and because it's round, it will cook really evenly, so you'll get every aspect of it cooked to the same done temperature. Ah, this is another one, is that a lot of cookbooks tell you to um, uh, to th that your cooking time depends on the weight. Yes. Well, now this illustration is three um, prime ribs, and they're all the same diameter, but they all weigh a lot different because one is 10 inches, one is 8 inches, and one is 5 inches long, but they're all 4 inches in diameter. They will cook at the same rate and be done at almost the same time <laughs> because it's the thickness that determines the cooking time. This is a rule that applies to almost everything. It's not weight, it's thickness that determines the cooking time. So um, any cookbook that tells you, you know, to cook it for X number of minutes per hour per pound is wrong. It's thickness, it's per inch that determines how long it takes to cook. Um, and when it's round, it'll cook evenly. So uh, 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 um, uh, all, all those same tubes are going to cook at the same rate. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, the other thing about the bones is, is they cover almost one third of the surface of the meat. And if you want to season your meat with a rub, you're only able to season two thirds of the surface. And everybody loves the crust. Yes. Everybody loves this heavily seasoned crust. So get the bones off of there, save them, cook them for another meal, make your roast round, season every inch of it, and you'll get a perfectly cooked roast. And I'm a strong advocate in reverse sear. Start it in warm, gentle air at 225. Takes a long time for heat to travel through water, and meat is 75% water. And, uh, oh, there you go. <clears throat> All right. The... Um, uh, the one at the left is cooked at two at 425. The one on the right is cooked at 225. And what happens is both of them, the exterior will go all the way up to 212 degrees. That's the boiling temperature of water because it's 75 percent. It can't go much higher than that. So you get 212 along the surface, nice dark crust. But as you move towards the center, the one cooked at the lower temperature on the right you'll have a lower temperature just below the crust and a lower temperature towards the center. You'll get more even color, more even cooking. The one at the left below the crust will be overcooked. So you'll have more overcooked meat if you cook at a high temperature. And again, a lot of cookbooks say, cook your beef roast at 500 degrees. That's too hot. That will get you a beautiful crust, but you're gonna get your beautiful crust by reverse sear. You're going to start out at a low temp and you're going to cook it at a low temp so you get it evenly cooked throughout. And then if your target is medium rare, which is where it should be, 130 to 100. Ah, thank you, Greg. You there's, there's, there's an example. That's a, that, that, is, that is a, it's not quite medium rare. It's on the rare side. Um, that's about probably 125 to 130. It may be a little too rare for some people, but um, you can take it up to 130, 135. Uh, it, let's say your target is 130. When the center temperature hits about 120 to 125, move it over direct infrared radiation right over hot coals 
or burning gas jets. And now you're going to apply energy, powerful energy, and you're going to sear the exterior and you're going to leave it with for about five minutes on one side. You're going to roll it a little bit, five minutes, roll it a little bit, five minutes, keep rolling in a quarter or an eighth of a turn until you've built that crust. Show that picture again, will you? Um, that uh, that crust, you can see it's, it's a really rich, deep crust. There you go. Um, a lot of herbs and spices on that surface. And yet it, the interior is uniform in color because we gently warmed it and then we seared it um, over infrared radiation and got that gorgeous crust. That is just about a perfect rib roast, if I say so myself. Um, and reverse sear, and you can do it indoors. Um, the way you do it indoors is, oh, hold that picture. And right. um, the way you do it indoors is um, you, you, you just turn on the oven at around 225, and when it gets up to about 120 or 125, then you put the broiler on. The broiler is infrared radiation, and you broil it. Okay, now this is what a prime rib roast looks like when you take the bones off. And um, you, you can see there's uh, several important parts. We start with the fat cap, um, and there's a lot of fat there, and you're going to trim most of it off. Um, on the left, there's what we call the lip, and that's that little strip of meat there. And a lot of people leave that on when they do a rib ribeye steak, but if you're doing a rib roast, it just gets in the way, and there's a lot of fat in between the lip and the eye of the ribeye, which is your, uh, your, your, your which is what, what something that uh, is, is the core of the that is the longissimus muscle. So you, I, I like to take the lip off. And then I can clean off the excess fat and chop it up, and I've got stew meat. I can do a stir fry or I can do a stew. Now, here's something that's a little radical. On the very far right, you can see is a crescent-shaped muscle. It's called the rib cap or the spinalis dorsi, and you've seen it. There's this thick layer of fat. Greg's pointing at it. There's this thick layer of fat that separates the rib cap from the eye of the ribeye, um, the spinalis from the longissimus dorsi. And um, depending on how many people you've got coming over, I've been known to peel off that rib cap. When you peel it off, you can do it with your fingers. You really don't need a knife. You, it comes off. It's like a salmon fillet. Hmm. Um, it's, uh, it's about an inch and a half, two inches thick. And when you lay it flat, it's about six inches wide on one end. And it tapers like a salmon fillet to maybe a half inch thick and two inches wide at the other end. So it looks like a fish fillet. And that leaves you with the eye of the ribeye, which is round. You can cinch it to round, and that's really choice, tasty meat. Um, and uh, I, I think I may have sent some pictures of a. Uh, uh, well, yeah, there. Okay, there, there, there's, there's one there. The, the rib cap is still on, but um, that's a, that, that, that's one that's going on. That actually, that's the one that's in the uh, Santa Claus picture um, before I, I, I finished it. Yeah. yeah, that's the same. That's the same roast. My goodness, well, it looks yeah. fabulous. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, if folks have more questions on beef roast or anything like this, obviously amazingribs.com is the place that they can go for that. Yeah, we've got. I've, I've written extensively on this, um, and uh, um, there's a uh, uh, a whole page about different ro roasts and uh, technique. But the, the the secret is get the bones off, get the fat off. Make it round and reverse here. Easy enough. This is Meathead from AmazingRibs.com, and you can check him out over there. You can tweet at him if you want from time to time. He's on the Twitter answering questions, but he would prefer that you go to AmazingRibs.com and answer all your questions there. And if you're looking for a great, unique gift for a loved one, join the Pitmasters Club as well. It's still less than $24 a year, and you have some great interactivity over there with a whole bunch of other like-minded folk that like live fire and grilling and cooking. And you can see Meathead right here on the second Tuesday of every month. Meathead, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but we will see you in 2021. Oh, hallelujah. Won't that be a blessing? I don't know. Will it? I mean, aren't we just turning from one day to the next anymore? Oh, but it's oh, Anna's oh. Reblitz and... Uh, all of us will feel better when this year is gone. I can't wait to see my friend Old Lang Syne or whatever the hell that <laughs> song is. <laughs> All right, Meathead, thanks so much. 
Always fun to see you in the Centralites. We'll see you in 21. All right. We'll see you then. That's Meathead right there from AmazingRibs.com. And once again, if you are looking for specific talk and direction, go on over to AmazingRibs.com and get all straightened out there. All right. We're, uh, we're a little long, so let me go ahead and catch up. Uh, Southside Market and Barbecue. We're already into the second hour, by the way. Established in 1882, oldest barbecue joint in Texas, famous for the original beef sausage. It's coarse ground in a natural pork casing. They also have authentic Central Texas barbecue meats. All meats, including the prime briskets, are slow smoked for many hours over real Texas post oak wood. They're shipping nationwide via the online store, southsidemarket.com. Shipping customers can choose to order now, ship later, include a custom gift note, and mail to multiple addresses without additional charges. Do that for your holiday shop. Send it to a bunch of different places. You can do it all in one swoop. All shipped items are vacuum sealed to ensure freshness and to ease of preparation for your customers. All meats are processed in the on-site USDA inspected facility. On-site meat markets for fresh and smoked product. Custom orders are welcome as well. Three restaurants to choose from. Elgin, Texas since 1882. Bastrop since 2014. There's also one in Austin. Grocery distribution through Texas and many surrounding states. 10% off coupon when you shop online at southsidemarket.com when you use promo code BBQ Central. That's BBQ C E N T R A L, BBQ C E N T R A L for 10% off your entire order at southsidemarket.com. We are back to wrap the first hour quickly. Stick around, we'll be right back. This is Brian Mayer, host of Hot Sauce Weekly. And you are listening to BCRN, all barbecue and grilling all the time. Continuing to produce incredibly mediocre content in an exceptionally professional way. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Craig Rampey. And as Meathead mentioned in the first portion of our visit in December, Fireboard 2, Fireboard 2 Drive, Fireboard 2 Thermocouple edition. Go to fireboard.com for more information. Go to fireboard.com and order everything you need right there. Check in with Ted, see what he's got, see what might be new and have him answer all of your questions. It's really one of the best gifts that you could get for yourself or somebody else. Six different temperatures simultaneously, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connected. Doesn't get any better than that. Fireboard 2 and Fireboard 2 Drive and Fireboard 2 Thermocouple if you're doing high heat. Love it. All right, we thank Meathead from AmazingRibs.com for the last two segments, talking about beef roast and before that, talking about gifts for your live fire loved ones for this holiday season. And we will start the second hour abbreviated, abbrevi- an abbreviated open to follow. Stick around, be right back.